right, it's talk time now. Finance Minister Kemi Adeonshu in July told the Senate that Nigeria was technically in recession. Yes, and now the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics has released official figures of Nigeria's economic state and that data clearly states that Nigeria is indeed in a recession. Economic recession is a period of temporary economic decline during which trade and industrial activities are reduced generally identified by a fall in GDP in two uh, successive quarters. It is gloomy news for Nigeria's negative indices released by the National Bureau of Statistics for a third quarter running confirms that Nigeria is indeed in recession. It is a fact that the finance minister is not shying away from, but she insists that a closer look at the indices show that contributions from some key non-oil sectors to the federal revenue has increased. We didn't wait for the NBS to come and confirm it because the first um, uh, part of having a strategy is to know your situation. The situation was showing us that, look, it's negative. So we came out, I think I, I came out last month at the Senate and said, look, we're technically in recession. Let's start having this discussion so that we now know how to get ourselves out of it. And that's what I would like to focus on. Indeed, President Buhari's cabinet is hoping to accelerate the diversification of the economy to identify non-oil sectors through a three-year external borrowing plan. Concessional loans will be applied to, of course, other strategic se um, sectors of the economy that will help to revive the economy. Power. There's a significant amount of money allocated to power projects, particularly transmission. This is long-term patient money that will enable us to solve some of the problems in that sector. Agriculture is the largest single beneficiary from this three-year borrowing plan. But in the meantime, Council approved a memo reviving the e-wallet system introduced by the preceding Jonathan administration. While the policy met with challenges, Agriculture Minister believes it was largely successful and helped to reduce the interference of middlemen in the supply of seeds and fertilizer. The program worked very well in 2012 and 2013. By 2014, it had a few hitches uh, as many states got involved in trying to select the providers, the input providers. And so the figures of debt piled up, become, became quite, quite heavy. And while projections about the Nigerian economy continues to look bleak and is a cause for concern, the ministers are confident. Right, joining us now is an investment consultant, uh, Dr. Ikin Nangosu. He's a council member at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It's good to have you join us right now. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, we also have from our Buja studio, uh, Jaye Gaskia, a public commentator. Jaye, it's good to have you join us right now. Good morning. Okay. Thank you for having me. Okay. L l let's start with you, uh, uh, Dr. Nangosu. The issue of recession has been on the front burner for so many uh, months now, if I have, so many weeks now, I have to put it that way. Yeah. But at, at this point that we are right now, how helpless or how hopeless is the situation? Even though we've heard comments from the Minister of uh, Finance, Finance, comments from Budget Office, that there is hope generally. But how helpless is the situation right now? Interesting. Well, happily, uh, the Honorable Minister of Finance, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on, on, on your show today. Yeah. It's, it's something that's on the lips of everybody in Nigeria, from the topmost to the lady that sells Akara on the street. Mm. She may not understand the word recession, but she knows that, hey, I'm not getting the money I normally get. Look at it, the Honorable Minister of Finance did not sound um, alarmist. She, she asked a question and she answered it. She said, are we confused? No. Mm. Do we know how to get out of this? Yes. Are we focused? Yes. Very important question. Mm. So that makes us believe it's not hopeless. That's on the one hand. Mm. On the other hand, whatever it is that they are doing, they better make sure that by December we turn the call. The reason is that when a recession, when the contraction of economic activities continues to become more severe beyond the consecutive two quarters. You begin, to, the economists begin to say we are moving into a depression. 
Oh, Mr. Abakoba was on TV yesterday and he mm. said that on radio. We'll be moving into a depression and that's more difficult to come out from. You see Venezuela, you see mm. Cuba. So make sure we don't go that way. One of the key questions that a number of us have asked ourselves consistently in the investment world is, the, the government in power at the federal and the state level, were they not conscious of the causes of recession in the past one year plus mm -hmm. that they were ruling? Because many of the actions, especially at the federal level, was as if they were actually deliberately racing towards having a, a recession. The, one of the primary drivers of a recession is lack of finance in the system, when the system is not oiled with mm -hmm. money. And if you notice, within the first one year of the government coming to power, perhaps because the government was alarmed at the level of corruption that they said they saw when they came in, they completely contracted um, releasing money into the system. They, they closed up the foreign exchange market, so forest is not available to people. You remove the 41 items from the list. You, you, then they now take a number of drastic actions which has been closely considered by the past government in deciding the way to go forward, like on the Niger Delta crisis mm. issue. And you find what? The, 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 the resurgence of uh, militants. Militancy. Blocking oil production. Because the key macroeconomic indicators of recession, reduction in production, reduction in household spending, reduction in, in investment financing, and reduction in wholesale and retail. So all these were happening are consequences of the action taken by the government. So we ask ourselves, there's a Minister of Trade and Investment. Mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't heard his voice on this recession issue, which all of us are waiting to hear. There's a Minister of Finance. Are they talking to the government? Is the government listening? Because you stop the foreign exchange, uh, you change the system, it gives a very, very big doubt to foreign investors. Is the government consistent in policy? Final investment decisions are held back. Money, the investment funding does not fly come in. The banks, funds are taken away from them, via the TSA, mm -hmm. back into the CBN, reducing money flow. The tariff structure, the customs, and the actions of customs and some other actions of government make the ease of doing business index drop further. So foreigners now say, even domestic investors, Hey, if, if it's more difficult to do business, if we bring our money in, we're not sure we can take it out because of the... Effort and all of these have combined then, together. Exactly. Then, why are we going to bring our money in if we're not sure we're going to take it out? All right, let's uh, bring in Jaye Gaskia right so, now. So, let, let me even quote the National Bureau of Statistics uh, that says, though the second uh, quarter showed temporary decline in the economy, it also indicated hopeful expectation in the country's economic uh, trajectory. Explain that for us. I mean, on, on the one hand, uh, it's not looking good at all. I, I mean, quoting the, the Minister of Finance herself, uh, Nigeria has a long way to go. And of course, she says it's the worst possible time. But we're not confused, according to her. <laughs> so explain this for us so that we can understand it, uh, you know, even better. Yeah, um, I, I'll be very clear about one thing. This is extremely difficult to explain, the <laughs> contradiction. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the, first thing to, the first thing to say is that uh, when you look at the uh, National Bureau of Statistics uh, uh, report, you find that uh, in all what lawyers we call materials particular, in all of the fundamentals, we are witnessing decline. Uh, portfolio investment, other forms of investment, foreign direct investment, all of these have dropped by an average of 17%. Uh, uh, economic contraction, in the, the, uh, uh, reduction in production in the different sectors of the economy. You know? uh, and then, of course, unemployment has also risen uh, 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 tre tremendously uh, along with inflation. So it's difficult to really see uh, uh, to explain this uh, contradiction, to say that uh, you have all of these uh, fundamentals in the negative, uh, but, that they, but then that there is hope. Uh, and so for me, I think that the, uh, uh, going back to what uh, Ikeda was also saying, uh, uh, the guest in, in the Lagos studio, mm -hmm. 
What we require now uh, from the government is to say that, okay, we are in an economic recession. So we need an economic recovery plan. Now, what would then be the fundamentals of this economic re recovery plan? Mm -hmm. It means the, the recovery plan must address questions about uh, increasing uh, capacity utilization uh, for industries. It means that uh, the economic recovery plan must be drawn up in consultation with all the various sectors uh, of, you know, organized for every sector, labor, uh, citizens, and the rest of that, because all of these people have made suggestions. Uh, uh, Manufacturers of Association of Nigeria, man, they have made suggestions about uh, the kind of interest rate, for example, that can guarantee uh, uh, investment flow. Uh, so these are, these are the things that you need to put together in an economic recovery plan. Before you have a borrowing plan, you, yeah. you, you see, because, because what we are doing right now is that you are placing the cat before the horse. We have a borrowing plan. We want to borrow some money over three years. Now, when we borrow this money over three years, okay, we know that uh, we have said it, we go to this sector and that sector. But what specifically in this sector are we going into? In agriculture, are we concentrating on simply producing uh, commodities for export without adding any value to it, without uh, investing in the value addition? This is what we need to see a holistic plan. And this is what we bring, we start restoring, you know, confidence of investors, both foreign and domestic investors to come in and to say that, okay, look, there is a plan. Uh, we know that if we put our body in such a place over a three-year period, there is a guarantee that at least there will be a certain amount of consistency in policy. That is what investors need. And that is also what your workforce need. Because if the citizens and the workforce are also not confident, uh, they cannot also put in their best and then productivity will also be you know, uh, 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 declining. So for me, it's difficult to really you know, uh, explain that contradiction. Uh, and I would say to, to the Minister of Finance that it is important to have a plan. That's what we guarantee confidence to say that we know we are, we are focused, uh, we know what we are doing is not enough because people are watching you uh, they are looking at your body language and they are not seeing any plan on the ground to, to, to show that uh, uh, what we are doing is articulate, uh, articulated and they are, they are not ad hoc responses. So far, what we are having are ad hoc responses to specific uh, uh, challenges, uh, some of which are then counterproductive and undermine other uh, other sectors. Mm. All right, Jai, let, let me ask you this. Uh, earlier when uh, Dr. Musu was uh, was speaking, he talked about about four areas that uh, compound mm -hmm. to, to bring us to where we are right now. But if we see, if, if there is a shortage in production and uh, then the, the reduction in liquidity or ability to spend and so on, and government comes up with a plan to borrow money to inject, let's say to inject and stimulate the economy, mm -hmm. especially in the area of infrastructure and all of that, and then there's money in the system, wouldn't that uh, jack up and improve the circumstance a little bit? It, theoretically, yes, it, it would. Eh? But you see, the, the challenge that we have is that we always assume that there's an automatic correlation that, for example, if you, if you put money into the economy, if you just put money into the economy, that the economy will be reflated and that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, you will be moving towards economic revival. But the problem is that if you do that in a manner that is not focused, that is not targeted, then you, you will simply be wasting money and you will be wasting resources. So, for example, let me give you one contradiction, for example. Uh, we, we have talked about economic diversification, and we have talked about, you know, really uh, uh, investing in infrastructure and uh, 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 putting public investment in infrastructure, okay? And one of the things that we have done is uh, looking at solid minerals. Uh, we have just signed this agreement uh, that has now released, uh, enabled the government to, you know, really pay attention to the steel sector. But do you know what? The same government, while we are investing in uh, infrastructure, we, did, we are not investing in road and rail facilities to connect Alaja to Ajaokuta, for example. And this has been a major uh, reason. You know, so uh, why that has undermined our, our, our ability to, 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 you know, uh, to develop the steel sector. So this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about. You need 
it, it's not just that you borrow money and that the money is there and that you pump the money into the economy. It is how you pump the money into the economy. What you use the money, utilize the money for in the economy, you know, that matters. And then, of course, you can build roads and we can continue to build roads. But you ask the question, you are building roads for what purpose? From where to where? To do what? You know, carry goods, services, and human beings. So these are, the, these are the things that you need to do. And are you linking all of your transport infrastructures together so that roads are connected to airports, airports are connected to seaports? These are the kind of things that we need to be investing in. And they will not happen automatically. They will not happen if we are doing that uh, in an ad hoc manner. We, you need an integrated plan, you know? So that's why I always insist that the first thing we need out of this is that all of those four areas that uh, you cannot forget, it was, as we mentioned, for example, uh, it is important that you then have what would be your re responses to each of these production, li uh, liquidity, you know, and then uh, investment and infrastructure. What would be your responses? And they have to be a all single right. plan. And how do we uh, then implement it? Okay, Jaya Gaskia, very interesting, um, you know. Uh, uh, submission there, uh, but uh, what I my reading from what he has said is the deliberateness in in government policies, both uh, monetary on the part of the CBN and of course fiscal policy on the part of government. All right, if you're just joining us, you're watching TVC Breakfast. And we are talking about the circumstance, right, the economic circumstance. Nigeria is now officially mm -hmm. and formally in recession. The Nigeria Bureau of Statistics came up with that to corroborate what the Minister of Finance said sometime that Nigeria was technically mm -hmm. in recession at that time. But right now, Nigeria is fully in it. In it. And we are discussing with uh, uh, an investment consultant, Dr. Ike Nangosu. He is a council member of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He's here with us. It's good to see you. And uh, we have in our Abuja studio, Jaye Gaskia, a public commentator who has also been following the trend of things. Now, yes, because you were, you, were about asking, mm -hmm. you were asking a question earlier on. Indeed. And uh, Jaye, you know, was talking about the deliberateness in terms of policy. If you're building a road, why are you building that road? If you're building a rail a system, why exactly is it for, to, to service a specific uh, purpose? Uh, but of course, listening to the finance minister say, you know, there's a need to make adjustments in the monetary policy. Uh, wh what kind of changes would you uh, like to see? I mean, because it looks like she's actually throwing it back to the CBN. Uh, you know, who actually come up with the monetary policies. And to what extent, really, do you think uh, the policies so far, whether monetary or fiscal, have affected the situation right now? Okay. Interesting. You know, I feel very sorry for the Minister of Finance. <laughs> Why is that? I'm very sorry for her. It's a bad time to be Minister of Finance in Nigeria. Uh, yes, and the, mm. the, the way the government is handling that the, the portfolio is not, not really helpful to the woman. She is in charge of fiscal policy. You take away budget and planning from her. You have a ministry of budget and planning. Mm. Right. Although budget and planning should have been a critical part of the finance ministry. But in any case, Nigeria has chosen that model, which works in some parts of the world, provided there's cooperation of ministers. Mm. Now, but so far, the government has not announced the fiscal policy framework that supports the budget. There is none. Mm. And it is a standard procedure worldwide. We haven't seen any. I don't know if you've seen any. I haven't seen any. So if there's no fiscal policy framework to support the budget, that's a major gap, part of why you're having a recession. And the fiscal policy involves tariffing, incentives. What incentives are you giving if you're taking money out of the economy? What incentives, for instance, are you giving to companies that are doing backward integration? By, by doing backward integration, for instance, Nigerian Railways Limited now is not importing her barley what you used to make the beer, most of it is grown here. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you are reducing the pressure on Nigeria's foreign exchange by growing here. You are creating employment for farmers and all that, so more money in the economy. What incentives are you giving to them? So the incentive is part of the, like tax breaks, it's fiscal policy. Again, takes us back to the issue of monetary policy. Central Bank of Nigeria, sorry, has bungled it several times. And that's their monetary policy implementation, I'm sorry, has not been optimal. And check it out. For the Minister of Finance to be saying 
Something has to be done about monetary policy. Shows you that they are disagreeing among themselves. That CP and you're not getting it right. You ask the question, what aspects should they handle in terms of monetary and fiscal? The biggest mistake the Serbian governor did, that one of the key reasons why the dollar shot out of 425 mm. in the parallel market, was the outright banning of the, the, the nine banks from the foreign exchange market. You don't do that in any economy. You don't do that at all. And he was, I, I'm aware that he was advised not to do it. But maybe you want to show how strong as a regulator you are because NCC banned MTN and all that. I'm sorry, the economy is larger than just the te telecom sector. So immediately you take them out, their own involvement in the foreign exchange market compl was completely eliminated and the dollar becomes scarcer and then mm. it gets more valuable. So he was right to have listened to the advice of his colleagues to reinstate all of them. You can face the fines you want to give them. That's what he did now is what he should have done at the beginning. So that has actually caused a lot of dislocations in the past one week that it, it's, it's been there and has created some unofficial billionaires. Now, back to the bigger picture before you come to the specifics. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the presidency and the government need to get off his high horse. A lot of us in the private sector were surprised at the arrogance of government to have said, they made a public statement, we regard the management of the economy as a responsibility of government. Therefore, we are not interested in having any private sector person in the economic team. Wrong. Even Obama has a council of economic advisors. Mm. There is no... The president doesn't have a chief economic advisor, as far as I know. I don't even have one. But they have special advisor on the economy. You need to have a chief economic advisor. You need to have a council of economic advisors. And it was just last week or week before last. Is it really about titles or what the people... The contribution people they can bring actually in. bring to the table? Yes, because this, most people who are appointed into those positions are from the private sector. And one of the reasons why J Jonathan's government succeeded on the economic side, whatever, whatever were his minuses, one of the, this economy was rebased to become the largest mm -hmm. African country regime. Nobody can take that away from him. But well, a lot of the contributions to the private sector, because the private sector will always bring in the global best practice. Most of the time, it's the private sector that points out to government, hey, this is trending in this place. Bring this in, and this, and this, and this, and how it's going to be done. So a week and a half back, the government itself was running cap in hand to the private sector now, asking for experts. It was all over the news. Which is what you should have done in the first place. That's why I said, why are they putting the first foot, the first foot wrong? So if you have those guys coming in and saying, look, do this, do this, do this, you are not under obligation to take the advice, but take it, sound out your colleagues, Get me pick your phone, call the US, uh, mm. your counterpart in the US and in America, in the, in the UK. Because whatever yeah. happens in Nigeria affects the whole economy. So mm. that's why I said, let's look at the larger picture first. Then you now dovetail. The government needs to release money into the economy. One, in the focus but manner that Jaya has said. A, a couple of times already, the, the 350 and uh, yeah. another 400. Mm. I want so to, yeah, to reflect I, I, the economy. Fine, but look, before the end of September, you have four months at the end of the year. Yes. So you're not looking at, I hope they're going to do up to 60% implementation of the budget. Release this money in a focus manner so that the economy begins to move. You start doing what you, should, you have said you're going to do under the, the budget. Secondly, I'm sorry, but... A lot of the government's SME schemes, mm. the 500 billionaire SME scheme and co, are not being disbursed because there is insufficient sensitization of the SMEs who should know what to use. The men are not even know the money is there, talk less of using it. So that's another way of putting money in the economy by lending to SME. Let them know there's a single digit interest rate for this, for that. Most of the sensitization is done just for the farmers. Mm. Maybe because there's a Bank of Agriculture for that. But the CBN and NEXIM and the, and the Bankers Committee need to do a lot more sensitization in order to put money into the hands of these people through that. that that's another way. All right. All right. Let, let, let's have uh, Jai uh, on here. Now, Jai, you, you have been monitoring this and you talked about uh, how coordinated all of this um, uh, effort should be in mm -hmm. targeting certain areas of stimulation of the economy. Now, some of the investments, in the issues of roads and rail and all of that that you mentioned earlier on, these things are capital in intensive on one hand. On the second hand, these things take time before mm. they are built. So if we have to narrow it down to the specifics, between now and the end of the year, is it realistic that some, some 
tangible improvement would have been recorded in taking Nigeria out of the recession from what you are seeing? Uh, I, I don't want to sound, uh, sound alarmist. I don't want to bust, the, uh, bust anybody's uh, bubbles. Uh, but the, the signs are not clear that we are going to be able to get out of, uh, out of this by the end of the year. My suspicion is that the way we are going, given that the policies that have uh, accelerated the contraction of the economy are still in place and that they have not been you know, uh, reviewed, uh, it, it seems to me that the economy will continue on its downward uh, uh, trend of, of contraction. And it seems to me that like, uh, very likely uh, quarter three is also going to witness a contraction uh, and, and a negative uh, uh, growth. Uh, you know? uh, because what you need to recover is that we are saying that you need uh, about 2% uh, uh, you know, uh, positive growth uh, in order, to, in order to, to flat out to zero. You know, that's what you need. So what are the quick fixes that you need? What are the kind of things that we can do over the next uh, three, four uh, uh, months? Uh, I, I, I like what the point that was made about the intervention funds, the various intervention funds. Uh, the challenge with the intervention funds is that the intervention funds have been set, uh, they have been set aside, but the critical stakeholders who are supposed to be the beneficiary of those uh, various intervention funds are actually have actually not been carried along. Uh, they are not being consulted. They were not consulted in preparing the intervention for and the and the criteria for it, and they are also not being carried along in terms of uh, actually accessing it. So it's and it's not just the SME fund. Uh, it is also demand the the intervention fund for manufacturers and the rest of that. Uh, at this point, before the end of September, what is important is. To get all of these critical uh, stakeholders in these critical sectors together to agree a common framework for the release of these intervention funds. Uh, some people have also argued that even the single digit um, uh, 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 interest rate for the SMEs, which is about 8 9 percent that they are asking for, is also too high because even manufacturers are saying 9 percent for them is also high. So you, you can imagine for SMEs that would be high. So there's a need to have. A, a clearer understanding of what needs to be done. And that's why just having the money there, uh, just spending it, for example, or, uh, just releasing it out, uh, is not necessarily going to trigger any uh, uh, fundamental change in the economy, except it is focused, except it is target targeted, and except it gets to those who actually uh, need it. Uh, that's been the bane of policies in the past. And that's what we need to do now over the next three months. Uh, those quick fixes can be done. But they, you need to target them properly. You need to have you need to have a database of, of SMEs. You know you need to know what is doing what, and then you need to know within amongst SMEs what are the critic what are your priority areas. So, so what are the critical areas that you want to actually channel the fund to? So in addition to a fiscal policy, you also need an economic recovery uh, policy and plan that will then guide all of this so that everybody in the economy understands uh, what is the need for them, where they come in and uh, what incentives are there, as well as what their obligations are uh, to, in order to be able to access those incentives. All right, uh, Jaye Gaskia and of course Ike Namosu. Uh, just hold on, let's uh, shed some more light on this. Nigeria, Africa's second largest economy, has officially entered recession uh, for the first time in over 20 years. Of course, you already heard that. Now, Nigeria experienced a decline in her GDP, that's the gross domestic product for more than two consecutive quarters. The country's GDP has been on steady decline since the fourth quarter of 2015 as the year ended with a meager growth rate of 2.11%. Now, data released by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics show that there have been no growth in the economy throughout the first and second quarters of this year, but the country's GDP rather went down negatively by 2%. Now, the recession is given support by high inflation, poor currency performance and rising unemployment. But Nigeria is not only in a recession. The country's inflation rate rose from 16.5% in June to 17.1% in the month of July. Official data released by the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics reveals that this is the highest inflation rate since 2005. 
the weak Naira has pushed food prices and other items to the rooftops. Now, the federal government says she is now going ahead with negotiations for the planned loan from the International Monetary Fund to ease the country's economic strain. The, the, the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshun, puts the amount needed at $11 billion. And the fund is to help the government finance its budget deficit. And let's look at Nigeria's performance in the economic sector so far. Hmm. The gross uh, domestic products GDP in Nigeria contracted 13.7% in the first quarter of 2016 over the previous quarter. Now the GDP growth rise in unemployment. But Nigeria is not only in a recession. The country's inflation rate rose from 16.5% in June to 17.1% uh, in the month of July. Official data released by the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics reveals that this is the highest inflation rate since uh, 2005. The weak Naira has pushed food prices and other items to the rooftops. Now, the federal government says she is now going ahead with negotiations for the planned loan from the International Monetary Fund to ease the country's economic strain. The, the, the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshun, puts the amount needed at $11 billion. And the fund is to help the government finance its budget deficit. And let's look at Nigeria's performance in the economic sector so far. Hmm. The gross uh, domestic products GDP in Nigeria contracted 13.7% in the first quarter of 2016 over the previous quarter. Now, the GDP growth rate in the first quarter of 2016 was 13.7%, the lowest since 2004. Now, this negative GDP is a result of the fall in global oil prices, uh, sloping downward in Nigeria's oil production considerable decline in the manufacturing, financial and real estate sectors. Now, in the non-oil sector, activities such as crop production, trade and telecommunications and information services supported growth of the sector. Growth in overall was, uh, was uh, weighed down by declines in manufacturing, financial institutions and real estate, like we mentioned. Now, the other major factor in the decline of GDP came from the four main activities that make up the mining and quarrying uh, uh, sector, which include crude petroleum and natural gas, coal mining, metal ore, and quarrying of other minerals. The CBN says that the Manufacturing Purchasing Manager Index, the PMI, dropped to 41.9 uh, index points in June 2016, compared to 45.8 in the preceding month. Now, this implies that the manufacturing sector declined at a faster rate uh, during uh, the review period. Hmm. Okay, let's uh, bring in Iken Namosu. IMF loan, $11 billion? Is that the way out? I mean, this seems to have come, you know, from the back door, and many Nigerians will be wondering, haven't we been here before? Did it solve the problem? It didn't. I remember the IF, IF, IMF loan debate of Babangida regime. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a good time discussing that under Kalu Kakalo, I think, mm -hmm. was the Minister of Finance then. Finance then. Um, the government, you see, there's one... I have always said that the government needs to adjust. Like Jaya said, mm. you said we are not confused. We know our way out, but we've not seen the plan. Mm. You need to communicate to the public so we criticize it. Now, you say you want to take an IMF loan, 11, 11, 11 billion, 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 billion dollars. At this exchange rate. You haven't communicated to us the full justification. So you just say you want to use the financial deficit. What are justifications? What are your projections? What do you want to, the, what aspects of the budget are, of the deficit of the budget are you going to use it to finance? What is the focus? Mm. Uh, there's a deficit in infrastructure spending in this area and this area. Let us understand. Because if, you see, the same thing I've been saying, the government should not believe that they have a monopoly of knowledge. If you're going to take, put this out on the, uh, on, on the citizens of the country, the people is going to, the, where the people is going to impact on, let us understand what the details of what you want to do. Did you, like Jai also said, carry the stakeholders along? Have you discussed with the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria? Private consultation. Hey guys, this is what we want to do. How do you guys think it's going to affect you? Have you talked with the Bankers Committee? These two key segments. Have you talked with the National Association of Small and Medium Enterprises? It doesn't have to be a public debate. There has to be a, a, a mm. government consultation with the OPS. You get their views. And then, assuming you had a Council of Economic Advisors or you have your own team made up of public and private, 
and even social enterprise. Mm. You sound them out on it. Because the conditionalities of an IMF loan, especially in this period, mind you, there is a global um, recession. Mm -hmm. It's been consistent, 2008. Here and there, some rises. The IMF conditionality are going to be tougher. Christine Lagarde, when she came to Nigeria in January, actually advocated this loan. And the government said, no. no. Now, you're coming through the back door to tell us, yes. When did you agree, yes? <laughs> Uh, well, to be, fair, to be fair, the government has not necessarily said yes. What government is saying, okay, there's going to be some kind of negotiation. So negotiations, that's where we're at now. But tell us what you want to negotiate. Mm -hmm. Why is it 11 billion US? What is the focus area? What is the tenor? You need to, to carry the Nigerian public along now. The, uh, are there alternatives to the IMF loan? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Now, let's, let's bring in uh, Foladili to uh, give us a perspective of the reaction of Nigerians to this on uh, social media before we get to Jai Gaskia standing by in Abuja. Hello Fola, again, good morning, Mike. Good Hi, You're good standing morning, alone at the wall now. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> good morning, Jai, as well. All right, so Nigerian recession, hard mm. pill to swallow. Yes. And um, some have even said that Perhaps we've actually been in a recession longer than it's taking us time to admit to ourselves. Mm. Maybe because we're too scared to use the word recession. You know, everyone wants to run away from that word. But let's Good see one. what other people are saying online. First one here is from at B. Bosin, and he's saying recession, a term that was nearly 100% alien on the streets of Nigeria just 18 months ago when everybody was waltzing towards March 28th. <laughs> Next one here, at Musa Usman is saying the truth is recession is not new to many countries it's about how you deal with the crisis at joyce odukoya is saying to get nigeria out of recession requires a concerted effort of both fiscal and monetary policies not just emergency powers to buhari at isima ode nigeria was once the giant of africa now we are in a recession. Naira is floating. All we have right now are Whiskey, <laughs> Davido, New Mikel, and Jalof. Jalof I wonder what that is about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and here at I am Eze Bunwa Joe oh saying there is no jet science to understand why Nigeria is in recession. It's a simple, it's simple rather. PMB is doing the right things at the wrong time. Ikenna, hmm. I want your reaction to this tweet. Hmm. Do you think, because I heard you talk about, you know, the government earlier, do you think that the president is doing the right things at the wrong time? How would you react to that tweet? Correct. He's doing the wrong things at the right time. Number one, Niger Delta. There was peace when he came in. There was production on oil. Perhaps because of the military background, he says, hey, I'm not going to spend this money giving you guys amnesty. I want to stop it. And then hostilities begin. Mm. Oil production stops. Yes, it is, and then he now uses force with the military. Use of military force is the right thing to do okay. if the guys begin to do the wrong thing. But you are the one that instigated them to go back into hostilities by saying, I'm going to stop this amnesty. I'm going to stop this. That's one side. Mm -hmm. Again, foreign exchange controls. Foreign exchange controls are right, but you're doing it at the wrong time. You just came in. You haven't got stakeholders to come together, put them together, private, public, Agree, what's the way forward? An economic plan unfolded, and you now say, hey, these 41 items, I'm taking you out. Just like that. It's the right thing to do if you have implemented for some time and you see. So you don't just begin to adjust when you have not done what? You have not implemented or you have not observed for some time. So, again, anti corruption. He's doing the right thing. We don't want corruption, we want a level playing field. But you are welding the big stick much too early much too quickly and in a way that you are not making it um you are not giving investors the confidence that this corruption drive you are, you are, you are undertaking mm. you are going to take it in such a way that if we bring our money in you will not interpret our, our money coming in for corruption transactions mm. because now you say for instance all bankers declare your assets a bank has public officers. Hmm. Okay, let me let me get um, <laughs> Jaye. Yeah. Let's take it to Abuja. Let's take it to Jaye in Abuja. Jaye, I believe you. You know, you've been following the conversation, and we actually have a tweet here that says it's simple. 
President Mohamed Buhari is doing the right things at the wrong time. How would you react to this, Chai? <laughs> uh, it's strange, actually. Uh, the right things at the wrong time. Uh, I think that if the time is wrong, then the, the question of actually saying that they are the right things does not arise. It's really, uh, for me, uh, there are a lot of the things, steps that have been taken uh, are wrong steps at the worst time for those steps, you know, uh, 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 to be taken. And, and I'll quickly give you, like, a, to, to go back to the two some of the two examples that uh, he can have mentioned. Mm -hmm. The Niger Delta uh, and Amnesty. It is important, for example, for Amne in Amnesty that the Amnesty program ought to be reviewed, needed to be reviewed, you know. But, you know, you review it in consultation with the stakeholders. You don't, you know, you don't throw it to them and say, I'm stopping this, it's not going to happen again. So you, you need to let them understand why it has to be reviewed. And then you need to actually then appeal to the wider population of unemployed youths and uh, uh, hopelessly unemployed youths in the Niger Delta, more than uh, four or five million of them, so that they you get their buy-in, so that uh, you know, the bribe that we are giving to 33,000 uh, armed militants, you know, can then actually be utilized to create employment opportunities for one million, you know, youths in the Niger Delta. Mm. But you need to carry the youths of the Niger Delta along in doing that. So a review was necessary, you know, but that review ought to have been taken, uh, to have been undertaken in conjunction with, uh, you know, those stakeholders. That didn't happen. Uh, so I, do, I don't even think that that was the right uh, decision uh, that was taken, and it was absolutely also the wrong time to, to have done that. Okay. Wow. Well, Fola, I guess we have to let you go here. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. All right. Thank you, Good job. Thank you so much. Okay, let me still stay with um, Jaye Gaskia. The IMF did predict a minus 1.8% uh, for Nigeria's economic growth this year, 2016. But the VP, who is the uh, leader of, the, of Nigeria's economic team, uh, uh, is actually very optimistic that uh, it's actually going to be much better than that. They're quoting the minus 1.23% uh, right now, you know, uh, uh, that by the end of the year it will be much better than the IMF you know, has uh, predicted. And then the FG is banking on their Greek and solid mineral sectors to actually drive the economy. But we know that these are long-term uh, projects. So how really, my question simply is, how can we ensure that it doesn't get worse than it is right now, whether at the end of this year or going forward? I, I, I think that basically what the simple thing that we need to do is that this government needs to sit down, uh, first as a government, and then putting a team together to have consultation with the rest of society. But you need to sit down and then to ask yourself, so what are the policies that we have in place now, uh, and what have been their impact on this economy uh, over the last one year? So therefore, what do we need to do to review and revise them in order to have a different uh, uh, level of impact. And you can quickly do this over a, a one week, two week uh, period where you put, if you put a team together to do this for you. And then after that, you then start implementing those reforms. So the ease of doing business, what, what, are, what are the things that make it difficult for businesses, you know, to operate? You know, uh, 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 small scale uh, businesses to operate, uh, and so on and so forth. So these are the things that you really need to identify very quickly. Your fiscal policies, your monetary policies. What changes do you need to make in them quickly now? You know, within the next one month. That's the only way we would get out of this. That's the only way. Actually, negative growth will not be more than uh, two uh, minus uh, negative two percent at the end of the year, mm. uh, because I actually think that uh, the IMF estimate is a conservative estimate, given the way that we are going and given the rate of the of the contraction of the economy over the last uh, over the last uh, two quarters, mm. uh, given the rate of the decline of the economy over the last uh, four years. Because this economy has been declining from uh, a growth rate of about 5% some three, four years ago, and it's been gradually declining uh, uh, up to this point now. So if you look at the rate of decline and the fact that those economic policies are still in place, they have been compounded by new ones. 
and they have not been put out of the out of the contest and reviewed then the projection is more likely that we are going to witness uh, a much uh, uh, you know uh, uh, higher than a uh, uh, minus two percent uh, negative growth all right jay uh, okay so jay thank you <laughs> now uh, let me come to uh, dr mosu here as we are gradually coming to round off right now there has to be some let me use the word quick fixes like mm. uh, uh, Jai mentioned earlier on, what would this quick fixes be so we can start seeing that because it's about Nigerians, it's about the small scale people, it's about that, not necessarily the big, 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 big of their companies and all of that, mm -hmm. but all of them are all important, but it's about the Nigerian people. What are going to be those quick fixes that we expect to see in the next, before the end of September or even the next month going on? Number one. Release the remaining funds for the budget as much as you have available to fund it mm -hmm. before we come to the deficit. Mm. That's number one. Number two, send the governor of the CBN and, and the managing director of Nexim out of their offices. They shouldn't go back there. They shouldn't be in the office in Abuja for the next one month. They should go to the six geopolitical zones directly by themselves not the getting report, and sensitize the business communities, SMEs and the larger multinationals, on the availability of the different types of funds for them to do business. Nexim should have more branches, and this, this um, zonal meeting should have the MDs of the bank should join them. For the one, one month, none of them should be in the offices. I'm serious. Number three, you see this ease of doing business which uh, Jaya just mentioned. Mm -hmm. It is the third thing that should be clarified. There is a National Competitiveness Council of Nigeria under the Minister of Trade, Industry, Trade and Investment. National competitiveness. And their role is to make sure that the ease of doing business index mm -hmm. of Nigeria rises because that's a major component of competitiveness. Indeed. Now you are setting up a presidential doing business, ease of doing business committee under the same minister. Is that not duplication? Whatever it is they want to do, harmonize this too. And go also zonally, send the head zonally with the Minister of Trade and Investment. Go and ask people in the six zones. What and let the minister take the note himself. Because I find there's a lot of sifting when reports are made to, to them. Mm -hmm. Get the sifting of this, get, get the information first hand on the ease of doing business index. Number four, trade facilitation. I'm sorry, but I keep saying this. Government focuses too much on the upstream and the downstream aspects of doing business. They don't focus enough on the midstream. And that is the and trade facilitation, the seaport, yes. Okay. The Nigeria Customs Services, that's number four now, mm. is introducing a new Customs and Excise Management Act, which stakeholders have unanimously said is not optimal in line with global best practices. Because not only is it going to increase the cost of doing business, mm -hmm. where, for instance, you're going to, if you now want to find out what's the cost of importing a gown, or what's the tariff rate for importing a gown, see 5%, 10%, you write a custom, Customs is going to charge you a fee to answer the question. All the user fees. <laughs> wow. uh, the, so, it, that's, not, so you need uh, to go and look into the trade facilitation mm. aspect, review that Customer Exercise Management Act, and let the Contract General of Customs go to all the six zones and sit with stakeholders in those, not to just come Lagos and meet you know, It's interesting and to hear you talk about this zone, I keep you know, zone, them yes. going to the zones. Because but the isn't this large. where the local governments, the municipalities, should actually be the drivers of the economy so that you can actually save the country cost when you have the CBN well, governor or whoever very, very correct. moving, you know. You are, you are, you are right, but that is mm -hmm. the, that's the tragedy of the constitutional arrangement we have. Because, and that's why the, the last national conference, they said there should be more devolution of power, restructure. Because everything is considered at the federal government. Mm -hmm. So you find that under the laws, under the constitution, the drivers of many of these change management initiatives must come from federal rather than zone. Mm -hmm. So these for me are the quick fixes that should be done. And, and, on number five, what's under trade facilitation? Mm -hmm. The access roads to the key ports in this country are bad. To the key airports in this country are bad. 
and the Nigeria Customs Service and the terminal operators mostly are not okay. providing 24 hour service. Okay. Uh, well, Dr. Ikin Ngosu, thank you very much for giving us uh, enlightenment in most of those areas. Thank mm. you very much. Thank you very much. Five so points, much. five quick fixes points, as the case mm. may be. Now, Jayegaskia, thank you very much for talking to us this morning from Abuja as well. Thank you very much.